What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Steve Busa GS. We got another scorecard interview for you, my guy. Please introduce yourself for everybody. Hey, yo, what's good, everyone? This is Hosta from Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, man, what else can I say? <laughs> Zambia, <laughs> Zambia, Talk MC. yourself up. <laughs> Zambian MC, you know, uh, they consider me an OG, though I'm, I don't really consider myself an OG but but yeah man i've been doing my thing for like 17 years now Damn. okay since since, yeah. since i released my my first project and uh and yeah man i've, I've done quite a number of things i've won a, a number of hats uh, over the years uh, i was one of the founding members of the hip-hop foundation of zambia um which is non-existent right now um i also managed a group called Zone Fam for about five years, uh, which is probably one of Zambia's most successful hip hop groups. Um, that is also not, that's the t-shirt I'm putting on right now, Zone Fam. Um, so the group is not is not uh, functional right now, but the, the brand is, the Zone Fam brand is still is still functioning. Um, and then, and then, yeah, man, I started uh, after like a, quite a bit of a hiatus from releasing albums. I started releasing albums again in 2017. Um, and then I released my last album in 2021. So I've got about five albums to my name. Uh, I've got a couple of EPs to my name. I've got like, I don't know, maybe 10 EPs or something. So you've been putting um, in work for a while now. I've been putting in work for a while, man. I've collaborated with people from all over the world, such as uh, this dude called Techzilla from Nigeria. I've I've worked with a Argentine producer called Poison Hertz, who is actually a b-boy. And this dude doesn't speak a word of English, but we managed to do a complete project together. Um, that's fine. Man, I've just you know been one of those dudes that's always looking to work with different people. And um, and we here yeah, now. That's pretty much it. That brings us that brings us to here, right? And we're here right now. Cool. So he, here's this my brings us here. Yeah. He, this is my vision for this talk. All right. Um, you 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 guys basically blindsided my channel with Zambian hip hop a few weeks ago, and I was like, all right, That's cool. It. Let's right. let's dig into this. Let, let's see what's popping. So for a lot of people, the interviews <laughs> right. are what like draw a lot of eyes, right? So with this interview, this is going to be the very right. first like peek into Zambian hip hop that a lot of my viewership gets to see. No right. pressure. But it's all on your shoulders now. Right. <laughs> so what I want to do. Hey, man. I mean. <laughs> I want to. Uh, I, I just want to give them a proper introduction. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to go over like the right. soundscapes, what to expect, the who's who, things like that. Give us like a like a like a Zambia hip hop right. 101 so that going into this further as my channel wow. continues to grow and digs in that we can be more educated on it as we know who it is and what we're listening to and stuff like that. I, I think that that. This will be a good base to us continue to grow the relationship between the Zambian hip hop scene and the channel. You feel me? Right. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. So, so Zambian hip hop is is very diverse. It's a very very diverse um, industry. Um, it's been in existence for a couple of years now. I've heard of uh, people releasing hip hop in Zambia from as far back as. 1992, 1993, you know, we have uh, some proper OGs, not OG like me, but proper OGs like Chilo Lemba and MC Suicide who released songs back in the days. Um, we had people like the Untamed Click, uh, who some of their members are, are still active today and, and releasing music. Um, one of the notable MCs from the Untamed Click is a gentleman by the name of Chisenga. And uh, he used to call himself Crisis. He's uh, the first Zambian hip hop artist to release a commercial album. This was back in 2005. So, so hip hop's actually um, a, newer, a newer genre for you guys as far as like, like being a popular genre in Zambia? Commer commercially. 
Yes, right. it's it's a newer genre commercially. Um, because yeah, people started only releasing commercial albums in, in 2005. Before that, it was just underground stuff, you know, right. a few singles here and there. And where do you but fit into this? Do you, do you consider yourself a commercial artist, an underground artist, a little bit of both? Did you come from one and land in right. the other? Like, what was your journey? So, so, so as, as for myself, I started off as a, as a, as a proper underground backpacking rapper. Let's go. <laughs> back in in 2000 yeah back in back in 2005 i was you know just this young kid you know living in my mom's house trying to figure out my life and uh, i ended up recording uh, one or two songs in a studio for the first time uh, and i was like yo this is something that i could do it was always my passion because if i take you a little bit further back i fell in love with hip-hop in 1993 when i first heard the Doggy Style album by Snoop Dogg. Uh, As my, we all my, did. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a number of us. Even here, that's a lot of first a loves. Of that's a lot of right. first loves. <laughs> exactly. So you know, my big brother played me that album, which he shouldn't have been, but you know, I heard the album and I was like, "Yo, what is this?" You know, and I started doing my thing, and then fast forward to me being in high school and performing on stage. You know. I was probably singing or rapping to Snoop Dogg's lyrics. You know what I mean? I was probably copying his lyrics and performing them on stage with, with a group of friends. And then, uh, so it wasn't, hip hop was not my only love. I also loved R&B. Like I'm a huge Jodeci fan. Okay. You know? So. Oh, you got, you got yeah, a soft a side. You got a soft side. I got, I I've got, got you. I've got a soft side too. And and this this brings brings it to me. I, I sing a little bit as well. I don't only rap. Okay. I, I, uh, I peeped singing. the melodies. I, I've seen you get in your melodic bag. I, I ain't hear you full on that's singing, it. I don't think, but I've heard the melodic that's bag. That's right. That's, that's right. So, so fast forward to me releasing um, a couple of tracks in 2005, getting my songs on radio. And back then we only had one, I mean, there was, there was a couple of them, there was, but there was one particular show on radio called Hip Hop to Rock Your Block. And it was hosted by a gentleman by the name of Drakes. Uh, so DJ Drakes played Zambian hip hop, like an hour of Zambian hip hop on radio every Thursday at around this time, 9 p.m. Uh, 9 p.m. in the evening. And, and this show was so pivotal in, uh, for Zambian hip hop because it was the only show playing that much Zambian hip hop on radio for a whole hour. And he would invite us for interviews, you know, we'd talk about, you know, what we were doing. And this is how a lot of people now started forming bonds with that were like fans, um, you know, just growing their fan base and people getting to know that, you know, this thing is real and we have Zambian hip hop. You and know, how, and we have people compared, that are recording. Com compared to how it is right now, is, is, is hip hop like thriving? Right. Like, like, is it healthy? Is there a healthy scene there with a, a dope podcast and stuff? Abs. Absolutely. Like, so let's go. Those many years ago, um, hip hop was was not seen. It was no one was paying attention to what the hip hop cats were doing because, you know, it was pretty much like, yo, this is a foreign thing. It's America. And no, you guys are trying to be cool, like like those guys from the US or whatever. Uh, but, you know, we, we kept on doing our thing. We'd, we'd, we'd go to shows and no one would attend the shows. No one would pay for them um it was it was really hard for for cats to to come out um and so like i was saying that that radio show really did a lot for for the zambian hip-hop culture uh then you know in 2008 we formed that hip-hop foundation and then we would have like events at a at a spot called uh, the playhouse um and over there we would have your battle raps you know, would have people in ciphers. See, this is people... one of my questions I had. I wanted to know yeah. if there was a battle scene in Zambia. Like, yo, I was about, I'm ready to dive into all oh, yes. All right. Yeah, we, we definitely had a battle scene back in the days. Not so active right now, but we definitely had a battle scene and some battle cats. Personally, I'm not uh, that much of a battle rapper. Uh, in fact, I'm not a battle rapper at all, but of course on wax, I would do my bragging thing and all of that. All right, right. But we have had some, 
serious battle cats in Zambia that, you know, could probably battle with anyone anywhere. Um, who, who, give, give me like but, some names because this is stuff I definitely want to like just one or two off the top okay. that like are, are built like that. Okay, so so there's there's this dude by the name of E Crow E Chronic that is still active today. He's he's still releasing tracks. He's one of the best battle rappers that I've that I've seen come out of Zambia. E um, and he was also part of a E Crow, but he, he e so he was E Chronic. Okay. He now calls himself E Crow. So that's E dash. C H R O. I, I can send you some links to his stuff. He's so, nice. He's super this is nice. Funny. In South Africa, there's a cat named Crow the Gnostic who goes by Crow now, and he started off as a battle cat. Right. You know what I mean? And that's ironic. He's he's nasty. Ah. He's, so that that's ironic. It must be the name. Oh, wow. it must, must run in the name. <laughs> it might it it might be it might be in the name. It might be in the name. So E Crow is definitely one of the nicest uh, battle rappers to come out of Zed uh who else would i put there uh i'll probably put k star there's a dude called k star uh that's actually even uh right now he's a very successful comedian but see how that would line the up dude is quick with the bars yeah he's quick with the bars very witty um and he's also he's uh he was in a group with uh Critic, you know, I think you you did a review on ah. KB Critic Tim. <laughs> critic, Critic yeah, is so, on my so top three critic cats to look and... into. These are my top three cats that I want to look into. And oh, like, Critic is nice. Critic, like a deep critic, dive critic is definitely nice. Like you definitely need to to dive into him. So so K Star is nice too. So we we've had quite a number of, of these dudes. Uh, unfortunately, because of uh, the hip hop not being very lucrative in the early years. We've had a lot of people that have, you know, fallen out of the way. They went into the corporate world. They they couldn't, you know, sustain themselves um, through hip hop. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm still in the corporate world. I mean, I'm I've been working all this time. My nine to five. Uh, hip hop hasn't, you know, it's done something for me, but it it hasn't. Um, it hasn't got got to that point for me where I could, you know, give up everything else. Uh, but I must say that right now in Zambia, we do have a number of cats that are living off their craft, that are living off of hip hop, and and that makes me very happy because back in the days we were not getting paid, you know, right. like I was saying, shows, endorsements, and what have you. But right now. We've got people getting brand endorsements. We have people getting record deals. In fact, recently we had a, a female rapper, and you know, I was told not to use female rapper or FMC by by a very <laughs> famous uh, lady rapper in SA back in the days. But we have a rapper signed to Def Jam Africa uh, by the name of Cleo Ice Queen. That's um, a hard name, and that's a huge. Yeah, that's a hard that's, name. That's, that's a huge. <laughs> that is a hard name. That is that is a huge deal. That is a huge deal to have a Zambian rapper signed to Def Jam. It's like that's a dream, man. Like we used to dream about this stuff, you know. DMX, Jay Z. You know, I just had this Def conversation. Jam. That's that's you so know? ironic. And now, I just right. I and was... now we have, yeah. And now we have Cleo, yeah, signed to Def Jam. That's cool. Um, and we also have. Uh, another female uh, Zambian MC by the name of Sampa the Great, who is touring the US right now. She's amazing too, but she's based in Australia. So she's the, you now you mentioned so, her on, on uh, the, the album that I reviewed, right? Yes. Has, yes, hasn't yes, reached yes, the, I, okay. I, I, right, a, right, right. That final There's a delay in us, in us talking. I took a my, reference. My bad. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Yeah, I, I took a reference from Sampa's final form uh, in that African Diamond joint, and and yeah, she's she's an amazing um, MC who's doing some amazing things right now. Yeah, you said you got a piece of advice from um, uh, uh, an MC in an SA who told you not to use FEMC. Who was that? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so back in the days i was big in forums i used to, i used to go into a lot of uh hip-hop forums uh and one of the the biggest hip-hop forums where i'm sure a lot of, a lot of sa cats 
used to uh, used to go into a lot is a, is a forum called Africa's Gateway, uh, and so uh, the lady by the name of Ntabi, Miss Ntabi, I did an interview uh, with I her. I, I love it. her. Ntabi. Yep, Miss Ntabi. Oh yeah, she's amazing. She's she's really she's really dope. So I, you, I, I I had a feeling. I, I don't I had remember. A feeling. <laughs> right <laughs> so i don't know what i don't remember what comment i made but i used the word femc and she was like dude do not use the word femc an mc is an mc whether female or male and i was like i'm never gonna use that word again yeah let me tell let me tell you a story about her real quick so i did an interview with her she's incredible yeah. i love her on and off the camera amazing person um she Absolutely one of the things nice. yeah. one of the things that we went over was actually how she used to back in the day have that chip on her shoulder and she used to be the rah rah ready to attack anybody that she felt was disrespected or type person and then if you listen right. to the album i made a post today if you literally right. go look at my twitter i woke up today listening to her like i, I put her on as soon as i woke up yeah. and i made a post on twitter i, I can't make oh, this wow. shit up go, go look at twitter after this interview you'll see i posted and tagged her today i talked to her today that on, is on dope, twitter. man I'm, I'm gonna check that out i'm 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 definitely going to check that out yeah but now if you listen to the album that she just dropped last year uh, versus the the, right. the energy the energy that she puts out how it's all positive and it's like it's all about like finding yourself and, right. and freedom and shit like that and then we talked about that comparison how she came right. from like yo i can definitely see her checking you back in the day like hey yo cut that shit out we don't <laughs> well, she was a, yeah she was she was That's strong fire. she was very strong she was very strong and i re i respect her i really do respect her and uh so yeah man so Fast forward to, to where we are right now. Zambian hip hop, like I was saying, is very diverse. We have, I would say the biggest rapper in the country is a dude by the name of Chef 187. Um, and he's a- Also a hard a, name. He's a rapper from the, very dope name, Chef 187. <laughs> People call him Chefy, uh, the Kopala Sabala, uh, the Sensei, he's, he's really, really dope. And, he raps in Bemba, so he's a Vanak rapper for the most part, but hugely respected. He's doing some big things, um, <clears throat> releasing some dope albums, uh, dope videos. Um, he, he was signed to one of the biggest record labels that has popped up recently. And he's one of those dudes that's, you know, everyone wants a piece of him. Um, who that's else the way it have? works for you, the dude. best, baby. <laughs> One thing I will say right. though uh, about the scene that I mm. that I've noticed is, especially right. when, I'm, when I'm like I'm talking to you, and we're talking about like looking back at like you know the cats how it used to sound versus how it is now and everything like that. Some of these young cats right. that y'all got out there are better now than seasoned vets were coming into this shit ten years ago. You know what I'm saying? So like that is true. That I is think very the, true. the future looks nice. The future looks like it's in, it's in very good nice. hands from what I've seen so far. It's yeah, the future is in very, very good hands. We've got like a, a lot of very, very talented young guys. Uh, but there, there is still that challenge of, you know, who's going to promote them, you know. Um, actually, I was looking at um, I had asked some people, you know, like a question like, you know, so I'm going to have this interview with Steve. What would you want to ask him? And and most of them were basically alluding to what can they do to increase their presence? What can they do to market themselves? What promotion, you know, like where's like promotional strategies? And, you know, what can they do with the little that they have, you know, to get out there? That's that's the question. Did you see the whole thread? Mostly. I, did you see the thread that I replied back with that? Uh, so I haven't had a look since, uh, okay. but I did I, see the, the thread that started. Yeah, I, I dropped about 20 paragraphs uh, worth of my thoughts on that specific topic. Ah, um, yes. on what somebody can do. Nice. But um, yeah, I'll be I'll be happy to chop up about that stuff too. And again, this is all from, you know, obviously just yeah. my perspective based on what I've been able to accomplish, the individuals that I've been able to interact with up until this point, stuff like that. It, there's a lot, bro. The biggest right. thing I can tell you, if you're saying like, hey, I have absolutely nothing. All I have is an internet connection and my music. I don't have any connections. I don't have any bankroll. I don't have X, Y, and Z, right? I would point everybody on earth to, right. this, cat, to this cat named Merkums. Are you familiar with Merkums at all? I've... 
I've I've heard of the name Merkums. I've heard it. Yeah, I've okay. definitely heard that name. So what Merkums did is uh, he created this 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 viral idea of spamming his shit everywhere and like i was i would literally seriously i'd be sitting at home i'd be on facebook and i see my grandmom's post and it would be a merkham's video posted underneath that i'd be on pornhub on page 56 <laughs> down in the comments this motherfucker posting his shit down in the comments on pornhub literally could not go anywhere oh and he wow ju- he just opened up for iced tea at the fucking art of music jaunt that just happened off of that so wow. like People now that's started, huge. Now that's he just huge. killed Flex. He was just on Flex. Just killed Flex. You know what I mean? Like, like we're talking about big accomplishments. He was just on. I think was he on Sway already? Like, come, like, come on, dog. Like, it's he, and uh, all of that. Wh- where is this dude from? Is he was is he born, Canadian by any chance? No, no, no. He's he was from Brooklyn and then he moved to Arizona, or he's from he's from New York. I think it was Brooklyn. He's from New York and then moved to Arizona and he reps AZ now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so his whole All thing right, is cool. like he wants he wants to put Arizona on the map. Like that that's like his whole thing. But like this as what we're talking about, who the fuck is from Arizona? You know what I mean? Like there's not like there's not that precedent. <laughs> there's not that precedence. There's not you know too what many, I mean? Yeah. But like and he did right. no no excuses, right? He didn't let the fact that his city wasn't a popping area for hip hop slow him down or anything like that. Bro, right. like his his story is like a movie. And I, I would encourage cats who who are at that baseline where it's like, bro, I don't have the money to pay for ads. I don't have the connections to collab with big artists, all the things that, that you want right. to do. This is a cat that just did right. it from the muscle. Now, the, the, the thing is right. that I will say about that is he's different. <laughs> he's mm. special. He's special. So he's unique. So he's... I can, I can, I can take from this that one thing is consistency. And yes. another thing is, is be unique, be different because People are not looking for the same thing. If you get in front of a million eyes, let's say right now I had a button that puts right. you instantly in front of a hundred, a million people and they will all watch your video. That doesn't right. do you any good if the video was not good. You have Absolutely. to make quality content first and foremost. Quality. So many people are like, yo, how can I pop off? How can I do this? How can I do that? And they're still doing single syllable rhymes, fucking clapping off mm. beat and shit like that. Like Some basic stuff, yeah. You know what I mean? So like the step one is always get better. <laughs> However good you are, get Absolutely. better first. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely. God forbid you do go viral. You do get those million views and it's trash. You just got written right. off by a million cats. Ooh. And that's yeah. way scarier than than not popping right yeah. away and getting the chance to make your mistakes and grow up right. normally and, and go for the industry and take your bruises and shit like that and grow from it. You know what I mean? So, so, so what I can derive from that is be prepared, be prepared and, and always be ready. And, you know, if, if you do go viral, look good, you know, yeah, be, get, be get the ready best. before that, <laughs> be the best. Yeah. The, and then the last thing I'll say is, is, is post with a purpose, right? Know, mm-hmm. know what, know what you're doing. I, I talk to people a lot about this when it comes to like using different search engine optimizations. I'm really big on read the terms of services for these, these, like, like if you're on TikTok, a lot of people mm. don't realize on TikTok that they have a, their, their new terms of service that came out like a month ago. It says right on there that the for you page, which is like what gets blasted to everybody is designed mm-hmm to only promote original content, which means if you're uploading a video that's also on YouTube, that's not original content. That's not going to get pushed. So just because you didn't do your research Ah, on what gets pushed, you're now hurting your possible numbers, which are eyes, which are subscribers, which are revenue. You know what I mean? So like, bro, education, whatever you're going to do, find out about it. Find somebody who's better at it than you and start picking their fucking brain. I don't know anything about Zambian hip hop. So I'm with you. Educate me. Tell me about it. Exactly. Who's who? You know what I mean? And like, right, don't be afraid. Right, don't right. be afraid, bro. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Seriously. I'm still learning exactly. shit every okay, day cool. about this YouTube shit, bro. Mm. Right. That's it. That's it. So coming back to Zambian hip hop, I, I mentioned Chef 187. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so hip hop in Zambia, like I was saying, is very different. We have a movement in the north called the Coppola Swag movement. So these are people from the northern part of Zambia, mostly in the Copper Belt, that rap in Bemba. 
Um, and they even have a dance that goes with with uh, with with their hip hop. You know, like it's it's a different vibe in the north. Uh, when people from here in the capital city go to the north to perform, it's 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 a huge excitement. It's it's just different. You know, the people there are are very. What's the word I can use to describe it? They're definitely they very hungry. Yes, very hungry. Very. It's it's like it's almost like going to another country when you go to the north. And you're coming from from the capital city. Um, and then in the southern part of Zambia, we've got one big rapper by the name of King Illist. You should definitely uh, review one of his videos. He does it. so. It's funny that he's from the south. He does trap trap Tonga. He raps in a in a language called Tonga, and he does trap music just like most people in the south in the U.S. do trap music. But he's got his own vibe as well about the way he he does his thing. Uh, very big on on branding and you know the way he looks and all of that, um, and then a lot of MCs here in Lusaka, of course, rap predominantly in English, but we've also got a good number of rappers that rap in in a language called Nyanja, and the biggest rapper um, that that raps in Nyanja is a dude called Slap D. So Slap D has been doing his thing. We were we were doing long. good. We were doing good with good names. That's that's not one of them. That's that's not up there. We can rebrand that. I mean, I mean, you you. But this dude is a he's a huge brand. He's like he he calls himself the king. You know, he calls himself the king. He's been he's been doing this thing for almost as long as I've been doing it. We even did a song together uh, in the early days when I was still working for Youth Radio. And he was a young rapper just coming out of school. Um, I remember we hooked up once. I think he had heard me on radio. I heard him on radio. I was like, dude, let's do a song. And I recently re up It was never really officially released, but I recently re-upped it. And, and he's turned out to be one of the biggest uh, rappers um, that Zambia has ever seen. He's also doing well, like in terms of living off his art. Um, and you know getting these brand endorsements and and things like that so he's doing pretty well and he also had a a, a record label and a crew called xyz so if you remember i, I told i told you about copala and their copala swag and then we had uh we have this slap d and xyz so a couple of years ago i think this was like 2010 when us when i was also starting zone fam uh, XYZ and Coppola ended up having like this beef, like a huge beef. Um, and this actually turned out to be one of the things that actually made Zambian hip hop popular huh? with the fans. They were like, I'm choosing this. It's like an East West type of thing. I'm right. choosing this side and I'm choosing the other side. And, and Zone Fam was kind of in the middle. We were just doing our thing, trying to make our mark on the continent. Right. Um, and for, for, for Zone Fam, the biggest thing that, that got us out there is we got to perform on the Big Brother Africa stage. That's dope. And yeah, in the, in the initial, in the initial um, you know, beginning of the Zone Fam crew, uh, it was actually myself, uh, a dude called Alkanai, uh, Dope G, Young Verbal Thugger, and J Rocks. There were six of us. And we got to perform on the Big Brother stage in front of 30 million people watching on TV. Damn. We grabbed that moment like no I... man's business. We killed the stage. And everything was uphill from there, man. Um, and it, its peak was in 2013 when we actually won Hip Hop Group uh, best hip hop group uh, for Channel O Music Video Awards uh, in South really? Africa. That's dope. yeah, that was really that was really really huge. Like winning a continental award right. um, over some really big names that people know, like AKA and uh, uh, there was Wizkid at the time. Um, just winning over those guys that was huge for Zambia. Um, and, and yeah, people will never forget, you know, history like that. Like that was just That's big dope, for us. 
Yeah. I got a, so, I got a couple of questions. You, you gave me a lot of info right. to work with and I'm trying to, to, yeah. to, to get through this. Right. So I got a couple of questions. Right. Right. Is there, is there a distinct type of music in Zambia? So like, if you go to South Africa, they have their own piano. If you go to Nigeria, they have Afro beats. You know what I mean? Is there a distinct sound in Zambia that is like unique to them? Okay. So Zambia does have distinct sounds like Kalindula, which is like our traditional sound. Uh, we have hip hop music called Kalifunku, which is not really popular right now. It was kind of popular in the early 2000s. But when it comes to our hip hop, I'll be very honest with you. We do not have a distinct sound. We cannot pin down Zambian hip hop to say this is Zambian hip hop. Because, I mean, you heard me and, and uh, Dominant One on, on African yeah. Diamond. It's like all over the place. Yeah, and it's there. <laughs> um you know uh we ha we have we have okay so if i have to choose a distinct sound i would say people like chef 187 from the coppola they have their coppola swag they have their coppola movement they're rapping in bemba it's a very distinct sound okay. but we don't really have a name for it yet because we are still in the early stages of our music industry I think we will get there, but we're, we are not, we're not just there yet to having that distinct Zambian sound because, and, gotcha. and one thing that people need to understand about Zambia is we're in a position where we are influenced from different markets because we are smaller than everyone. You have music video channels, you have yeah so basically let me focus on the music video channels these music video channels will play mostly nigerian mostly south african music to to the kids all the time uh even the movie channels most of them are nigerian we, we are mostly watching nigerian movies so zambians have been heavily influenced by these different places Right. Even though there was a time when Zambian music, I think back in the 80s, did also influence people out there with the traditional music, it kind of came back to, to us where we, we are also now very heavily influenced by everyone else. Even the radio, even the radio stations will play a lot of music from, from other countries because you will find that the major labels have that presence here where they're able to influence our playlists okay. and so it's very it's very hard for for us to have that distinct sound because everyone will now want to do what everyone else is doing out there to become popular right you know? and, uh, that, that makes sense if that's so the like hot, if that's the yeah if, if that's the hot sound everyone will be like oh look i'm gonna do i'm a piano because that's the hot sound i'm gonna do afro beats because that's the big thing right now you know, and so we're trying to form so the Zambian sound, which is existing. Let me let me let me jump in at that point too, because because that that that's interesting. Right. So one of the one of the big conflicts right. that I that I run into specifically in like South Africa, they have a some they have a similar situation yes. where a lot of their media is American controlled. Right. Like they, they get the American songs and they get the American television and everything like that that they watch. Right. In addition to what they have. Yes. This creates conflict because now in hip hop in South Africa, you have the division between vernac right. spitters and those who are the American impersonators. As you know what I mean? Like that's that's the constant back and forth right. between what's little. Since there is no like you know, you know, specification of a Zambian sound, do you right. guys uh, do you avoid that altogether? Like you guys not have the infighting because it's like, yo, we just want to be ill. It doesn't matter who you're trying to sound like, it's just about the bars, or yeah. is that does it still happen between right. like, no, just languages? Honestly, no, we, we don't have the infighting. We don't have the infighting. Of, of course, you know, the fans will have their preferences. Uh, majority of the fans right now will be like, yo, Vanak rap is what it is locally, you know? Uh, these guys that spit in English, okay, they're doing the thing. They might get out there if they are lucky. But yeah, most of the, a lot of the fans, are supporting most of the vernac rappers and i'm i'm happy with that i'm cool with that because one it's it strengthens our culture it preserves our culture and 
for me to see one of these guys that spit in Vanak make it big internationally, that would be big because you know they'll be marketing the country, uh, people will get to know what's happening. But that does not take away from the dudes that rap in English. These dudes that do phenomenal things on the mic in English that probably could be on a stage anywhere in the world like Sampa the Great is doing right now. I don't think people would have pictured someone like Sampa the Great performing live in Toronto, headlining a stage. No one would have seen that, but she's doing it right now. So it, it, it shows people that it's possible. It's possible to get out there and be yourself. I tell people, look, we have all been raised differently. We were not all raised the same. Um, some people went to private school, some people went to government schools, some people were raised by parents that spoke this language, some other people were raised by parents that spoke this different language, so we can't all be the same, we're all unique in our own way. So I don't like the whole thing of pitting people against each other because they rap differently or, you know, in a different language and all of that because you know, people are unique. They, they, some people just grew up listening to, to TI and, you know, there's Nasty C doing his thing now in, in ATL. Uh, some people grew up listening to uh, TKZ, which was a popular Kwaito group uh, in SA back in the days, which I grew up listening to them. And then you find people that actually mix the English and the Vanak and they do it flaw flawlessly. Uh, one of the best examples I'll give give to that would be uh, Reason, Reason, the MC in SA that's now doing I'm a Piano. Right. That dude can do anything on the mic flawlessly, you know, English, Vanak, in, out. And, you know, there's people that do that here in Zambia as well. So Whenever I think let's about not, that, let me, uh, let me give some Let's not box ourselves. Are you familiar yeah. with, with uh, Mex Cortez from Tanzania? Yes, I've heard of Max Cortez uh, a, a couple of times. I've actually heard a couple of his songs. Dude is nice. Uh, Yo, the way he the, switches yeah. in, and out, in and out of languages, like, bro, I don't right. even, I'm three bars in before I realize he even switched and I'm not comprehending shit. I got to bring right. it back. Like, the dude is nasty with that. I just, had, I just had to give that shout out because when there are certain people that I think of when it comes to, like, literally, like, I pointed out, I'm like, oh, that's super, like, you look at that transition between languages. Like, it's flawless with some people. You exactly. Know and there's a lot of people that do that here. So, I mean, we call these super MCs. Uh, my, my big brother, big, big, big brother, uh, Chuck D actually coined a term for that. He calls that super MCs because he's trying to point out to people that, look, there's these MCs in other countries that can switch even up to three or four languages. Um, and they need to be recognized. They need to be you know, given props for that. So, so yeah, I mean, I don't like pe putting people in a box. I just let people do their thing. Basically, that's my, my Fair look enough. at things. Yeah. Cool. So when it comes to like the, the, the commercial scene versus the underground scene right now, right? right? right. In hip, in hip hop, what is more populated? Are people trying to, to do the, the commercial music more right now? Is underground thriving right now? Like what's popping? I would say definitely the, the the commercial scene is popping right now because it's 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 pretty lucrative right now. Nice. Uh, you know, pe people are, are are making some good bucks. I mean, I, I I really don't. I'm not really for it, but I'll give you an example of the the betting companies have hit Zambia very hard right now. You know, these companies. I won't say their names. But, you know, artists get to just post their music and then put a code or something like that for this betting company and then get paid. So, you know, people are, are, are you know, popping that way, like the, the they're able to make, a, make a, an extra buck just from, from doing a few posts, which I'm not very crazy about because I think that actually hurts them a little bit in terms of their fan relationship because they're influencing their fans in a kind of a negative way because I, I'm not really down for gambling. I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> I'm then, a poker player. Look, so I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's cool. Here and there, <laughs> once in a while. No, not all the time. Not every day. <laughs> if you got the money, but, don't 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 lose your house. Yeah. Yeah. True. But look, the underground scene in Zambia is is popping as well. We we have underground cats that are not played on radio that are not um uh, that might not have as many fans as a slab d or a chef 187 that are doing huge numbers on the streaming sites so you find a lot of the underground cats have the streaming and maybe their social media and their niche market figured out uh, i'll give you uh, examples of a cat called c3 this dude c3 phenomenal spitter you know amazing at his uh, at his craft he's doing like close to a million streams on on audio mac you know we've got another dude by the name of lj mojo who you should check out as well I got a little who is doing, I'm writing everything down <laughs> who's doing some very good numbers as well you know so these cats have got it figured out you know they they they're doing their thing even if they're not getting that commercial love you know they're getting their streams they're making some money there uh c3 even did a thing where all the money that he made from uh his uh uh mp3 sales from a site called Mvesasani, uh he donated that money to like buying uh sanitary pads for for girls in high school you know so which shout was a good him. look and yeah shout out to c3 man that was big of him so the, we've got people doing stuff like that um that are seemingly flying under the radar but believe me when these people get to that stage where they are considered commercial they they they'll be gone because they they've got it all figured out Just already so. take the fuck off once the once the foot's in the door exactly yeah that's so dope, there's man. some nice dudes man c3 lj mojo you know critic i have a very uh, important i have a very important question for you all right 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 <clears throat> I'm, let me, I, I gotta, this is a couple part things. So let me get the full thought out here, right? The question is right. who or what's, what song or artist or, or what scenario is the international door to, to even find out that there is a Zambian hip hop scene? Not everybody has a channel like I do. Like I was blessed that right. y'all found that I had a channel and people start hitting me up and they're like, yo, you gotta tap it. The majority of the population do not have that, right? So like right. I, I discovered uh, South African hip hop is when I first discovered that there was hip hop scenes outside of America and Canada. I didn't even know that. Right. right? So right. that was because Nasty C got requested, got got recommended to me from the YouTube search on the side. Right. So wow. Nasty C breaking into the markets in in the states literally is the reason that like I all of this stuff in Africa even happened for. Shout me. out! Shout out to Nasty C. Yeah. Shout out to Nasty C. Like that, yo. The, the, the place in my heart, see. that kid can do no wrong for the rest of his life. Because, like, yo, he changed my life oh, for entirely, sure. entirely, bro. But, like, oh, for sure. how do we then find out about Zambia? Like, like, who's the meal ticket to, like, cool, now that I got the foot in the door, if I'm in America and I'm sitting in Philly eating a cheesesteak and shit like that, right? I have no right. idea your country even exists. How, right. how, how do I get that music from you to that person right now, right now as it is? Wow. I mean, look, our music is everywhere. It's it's on the same platforms that everyone is using. Uh, you know, your, we've got our music on Spotify and Apple Music and literally on every streaming platform that's known to man on YouTube. Um, what I've been personally trying to do to, to help that search engine optimization is having Zam like playlists, you know, your Zambian hip hop playlists, you know, on YouTube, we got the same on Spotify, and even some some fans. In fact, some of the fans have got the biggest playlists out there, and they've really helped uh, get Zambian uh, um, music out there. I think where Zambian hip hop suffers is that we don't have that one platform where someone can come and and watch at least zambian hip-hop videos like a like a big channel because in sa they have like a channel o, and right. then the nigerians have like mtv 
but Zambians don't have a platform like that. Um, and this is where I think YouTube can come in. Um, even with what you have done, Steve, the reason why I keep on saying this is huge, this is big. If you search and check Zambian hip hop, rarely, if uh, we barely get reacted to, there's a couple of reactions out there by, you know, some Zambians in the diaspora, which has helped. But a channel like yours that does reactions even to the Nigerians, to the SA cats, is definitely helping bring eyes to, to Zambian hip hop. And that yeah. is absolutely huge. And we are, we are hoping that this will uh, encourage other YouTube reactors to react to Zambian hip hop as well. And this we're hoping will be a breakthrough. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the absolute truth, man. Some dudes are like, pay me hundred bucks. I'll react to your video. You know, uh, I mean, I get offered money. I get offered money a lot. I think that, yeah. And I some think people that, will offer. Yeah. Like the way that, the way some, that my channel is set up though, it doesn't really like, it, I would feel really bad if you gave me a hundred dollars and I scored you a right. 40. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, it feels like, like I feel shitty. I've, I've been paid for reactions, but my re like, if I get paid for a reaction, there is a very, very lengthy conversation that comes along with it where I'm like, look, right. dude, I don't give a fuck about this. Like this money is cool, but I have a whole career. Like my job is set. The reason I can be right. objective on YouTube is because I don't need this right. shit for money. I'm doing this out of passion. Right. So like exactly that concept of like, here's, here's a hundred bucks. And then I'm like, man, this guy can't flow for shit. It's like, right. ah, it there feels dead. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, so look, we really appreciate it because it's, it's a natural thing. It's not forced, you know, you, you've reacted to our music and we're hoping that this can open doors and people can now subscribe to your channel. And there's that mutual exchange of, you know, it's hip hop. It's a movement. We're doing this for the culture, nice. um, and and yeah, uh, people really look, appreciate it. And and yeah, let me do this then. More. Let me talk. Let me talk to the the Zambian audience mm. real quick then. And I know this is right. more about bringing you to my audience, but since we're on the topic, uh, let me let me kind of for like the if you're watching this and and you're an artist or you're a fan of an artist and you want your artist reacted to and you're not familiar mm. with the channel, what our goals are and stuff like that. I'm gonna give you a couple ideas that I do on my channel to try and get artists in front of new eyes and see if it's something you would want to participate in. And like I said, like, like I'm all about this idea of just bringing people together under the banner of hip hop. Like if something is right. dope, it's dope. It doesn't matter where the person is from or what it sounds like, like, like music has, a, has this ability to kind of like transcend barriers. And like, you can tell when something's fire, <laughs> no matter what, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just sounds good. That's music theory in a nutshell. Right. So right. when it comes, when it comes to the channel, a couple things I want to make clear. Number one, my channel is not like a dictatorship. I say this all the time. I'm, I'm going to score things based on my biased own personal opinions on what I like. If I say something's right. trash, it's trash to me. You may love it. I don't want you to like it any less. If you like something right. 100 out of 100, bro, I do not want my opinion to make you enjoy music less. To influence, is, yeah. You don't want to influence anyone else, yeah. Now, that being said, I do think that a lot of people who listen to music are fucking idiots and that they just don't understand <laughs> what is dope and what is bad. So a lot of times I will go into the bar breakdowns and explain the mm. difference between like an overused simile versus a dope metaphor. And a lot of people just have never heard the terminologies that go into the writing process or the production process or the, right. the review process. So I kind of create like this HUD where we could just talk about all that shit. And I don't always get it right. There would be time, bro. Right. A reaction channel is just that. It's my knee-jerk reaction. It's the first time listening to something, right? I'm going to get it wrong a lot. There, and there's some songs that take time to grow on you, right? Like, there will be songs you'll hear right. it like, bro, I hate that shit. And then you hear it 45 more times it's on the radio, and that's your shit now. <laughs> like, right. you're like, take all this into consideration. Yeah. You know, you know, Steve, uh, sorry, sorry for cutting you off. I was just going to say, I will say something about your reaction uh, – as opposed to other people's reactions. What I have noticed is 
I can tell that there are a lot of people that are doing this reaction for numbers. Andrew. But what we appreciate about your channel, Steve, is that you actually give positive or negative feedback, but it's helpful for the artists because then the artists can now go back and work on themselves, work on their craft, work on their production, work on the mixing and the mastering, and they can be improved and get better from there. Whereas opposed to- That's the dream, the baby, reaction, that's the dream. <laughs> And then nothing is happening. So, so thank you, Steve. We appreciate your appreciate your that, honest, you know, reactions, your unbiased, unfiltered, you know, super, super biased. Like, look, super biased. I I realized I I didn't realize that I have so many lakes and rivers bars. There was a lot, bro. You know, <laughs> I went back. No, look, no, seriously, I went back to a song from 2012. And I had some rivers in there. It was it was a hard track, but it's like, yo, my flow is long. River now is the length of it. As powerful as the mighty Zambezi, cause I'm the strength of it. MC still chasing like my waterfalls. Victorian words, my wordplay, David. I'm still a living stone. See, I exceed the norm. Study my every move, cause I've achieved degrees greater than the sun, and ain't got ish to prove. You need earth equipment to get this kid to move. I got medals and pedestals, and ain't got ish to lose. See, I refuse. See, I restrict the news. Cable networks want a net worth, like taking fish out the sea. The one that raised my net worth, you know. So I was like, "Let's go." <laughs> you got about to get me in my bag. All right, we gonna turn this into a cipher quick. Come on, come on. <laughs> nah, but this is dope. This is dope, man. Oh yeah, yeah that, you you actually know that I rap now. You, you I, I seen you comment I, on the man. I know. I I man. I'm a I'm a researcher, man. So I I, I checked it out that that you rap. Uh, you you're primarily a battle rapper. Yeah. Uh, I can also see you're you're good friends with with one of my mentors. What? Okay, now call him a mentor. One of my legends. One of the dudes that I listened to back when I was beginning. Uh, to me, Stogie T. Stogie? That's my brother, Doug. Yeah, man. So I'm like, oh, dude, man, he's cool with Stogie. Then no, oh, let's go, man. Because when I was coming up, I listened to Stogie, like African MCs, Stogie, Zubs, the last letter. And Zubs, Dover. let's go. Oh, Rest come power, on. That's my bro, big brother. Bro. I did I, I did a song with Zubs in 2012 on, on my, my album with Texilla called The Extraordinaires. That was the best thing that ever happened to me up to that point in my career, doing a song with Zubs. That's awesome. Um, and I'll never forget that. And I even met him in SA for a couple of minutes. Uh, a friend of, a mutual friend of ours introduced us. And that was, you know, that was awesome just meeting this idol of mine, you know. So Zubs, Proverb, uh, Stogie, these these dudes like. Oh, Proverb, I thought you said Pro Kid. I said Rest in Power. I thought you said Pro Kid, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not trying no, to get proverb. that man an early grade. That's not, that's not, that was not my intention. <laughs> No, I hear you. you know, proverb when like just growing up listening to those three people, Pennwise. Yeah. Yo, man, you had to be sharp. You had to be sharp. Sto yeah. Sto Stoke is Stoke is probably a top three MC of all time. I don't do the list, so don't ask me what my top fives are and stuff oh, like that. Sure. But when it comes to Stoke, and, and my relationship with him has gotten crazy. This is so, so a little anecdote. This this is actually yesterday. Right. Um, he ends up hitting me up about something, right? So I'm talking to him, yeah, and this, this is how my relationship with him is, right? I was, I was, I was, we were talking about something and it was like some real life shit. And I was like, all right, that's cool. And then I, and then I tried to break the tension. I was like, ah, oh, you ain't say nothing about my battle. Like blah, blah, blah. And he replied back, his reply back was fuck your battle. <laughs> I was like, oh, and, and then he replied back after that, after I was laughing, he was like, I'm going to fuck about your battle. I care about you. Wow. And I was like, bro, what? What? There we go, Stogie I'll, cry, I'll cry right now. Don't fuck with me. Screw <laughs> me from the V. Yeah. Bro, Stogie, my, my relationship with Stogie is, is unparalleled. Like, that's my bro for real, for real. And shout out to PQ, nah, that's too. Really like, dope. The three of us, the three of us, when we, we were putting the podcast and stuff together, like, that's a bond that's not going nowhere. I, I'll ride it down nice. for both of them. Pristine that's Queens. That's really dope, man. That's, that's, that's beautiful. You lost my train of right. thought. You got me on all this stuff, man. Ah, yeah. my bad, my bad. You're good. No, no, no. All right. So I was talking to the, the cats in Zambia. So let me uh, let me wrap this up, and then we get right back to 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 where we were. All right. Right. Um, 
the way that the channel works, all right? I don't go through the request myself, right? What I do is I have a team of people who understand my taste in music and they go through, they have access to the GS Gang quality team or they're in my Discord. That's There's a link to mm. the Discord and, and every one of my things. Oh, nice. And, and they're the ones that curate my, my list that I react off of. So then all oh, I'm nice. doing is I'm looking at the list that they send me and I'm seeing what I'm in the mood to listen to for the day or it's a theme week or whatever the case may be, right? They're instructed to only put songs on there that they think will score an 80 or higher. I do that nice so that my channel is not some toxic place where it's me talking shit on people. Like sometimes they slip through the cracks. Sometimes I just won't be feeling something or I'll be doing a whole album review or I'll just feel like reacting to something that's not for quality and, and there will be a bad reaction. But I would like for them right. to stay the minority. You know what I'm saying? Like my channel is mm, not for that mm. cat. Like if you just started rapping last week and, and you have a lot of basics, mm. you're usually gonna have a you're gonna have a bad time on the channel. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh yeah, it's not for everybody, and and I respect it. You know what I'm saying? But for the cats that are on it, I, I try to show as much love as I can. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it's all about. That's dope. Yeah. Here's how we get people in front of new eyes. All right. Mm. Tell me if any of this stuff sounds dope to you. All right. Okay. Number one, I do a series called First to Three. This is basically a versus series all right so you, you seem like they do the the verses on, I've seen on IG. that i've seen that yeah but i put the power into the gs gang's hands so let's say there's a cat out there who's a huge fan of holster right right and they say there's another cat out there who's a huge fan of uh jesse right the and they're like, yeah yeah and they're like yo i think holster's better than jesse i think jesse's better than holster, blah 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 i put those cats against each other to give me the top five Ooh. from holster give me the top five from jesse and we put them against each other on the channel and it's obviously yeah. it's 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 an impositive thing you know what i mean like we're we're yeah. big up in both mcs but we're doing exactly. song for song and now the people who were a fan of one artist are now going to be exposed to the music of another artist that they may not have been with and maybe maybe in zambia if you pick two zambian artists they already heard of everybody but it gets spicy when we start doing a nigerian artist versus a zambian artist and or South African. So Zambian, right? Exactly. Now you have brand new eyes in front of people that they've never heard of before, and it's organic. It's not being shoved down their throat. You know what I mean? That is dope. That is a really dope. That is a really dope way of doing things. I like. If that. you guys, if you hear this and you want to participate, just hit me on Twitter. I try to follow people back who are in the GS gang. I usually put up like a thread every month where I'm like, yo, if you want to follow back in your GS gang, drop a hashtag, let me know who wants to participate in shit, bro. And like, yo, right. if my channel can get y'all some more views, if my channel can get you guys some type of uh, additional just, just visibility, like that's what it's all about, baby. Like I'm, <laughs> no one gives a fuck about me. I'm the least important person uh, on my channel. <laughs> believe it, believe it. After you did a reaction to the Zamrock Cypher, I have people hitting me up that are here that didn't watch it. They're like, yo, that Zamrock Cypher was hot. I was like, oh, so you saw it now? It's been months, <laughs> you know? So it's cool, man. It's it's cool that 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 it's opening up to people now. Yeah. That's dope, man. Another thing, uh, I just, uh, we talked about this very, very briefly, but I think on air in front of everybody is a cool way to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. I just got a partnership situation uh, with a movement in Nigeria called Chess and Slums. Um, and we have set up to do a donation stream on May 1st, where 100% wow. of the proceeds is getting donated to kids in need uh, to supply them with both supplies in the program, as well as the year's worth of tuition to teach them chess wow. as well as further their education. The stream wow. that we're going to be doing this for uh, the people who are in the GS gang who want to participate, I'm going to be mm. reviewing their music in front of everybody live. Then everyone's going to be tuned again because for the for the charity event, you know what I mean? Yes. So not only does all the money go to the charity event, but now you have people from all over the world who because people come together for good causes who are exactly. now exactly. I have the chance to then play music and stuff like that from all over the world and put new artists that in front beautiful. of the eyes. That so, is beautiful. Hit me up with some shit like that, and I will be more than All happy right, cool. to play Zambian hip hop on the charity stream as well to try and, nice. and get some additional lives. This is what the channel is all about, bro. This this right. is this is what I want to do. If I can impact the world and make it better and talk my shit at the same time, like let's go. Right. We're lit. I'm in. <laughs> Why not? Why not? It's for a good cause. Um, I'm all for it, man. I'm definitely all for it. And we'll, we'll talk later too about other things, but yeah, I, I do a lot of different right, cool. shit to try and get to, to get eyes in front of people. Um, but yeah, right. man, it, it's, it's, I think 
the discovering y'all and knowing that you guys are actually ill and there's artists that I can put on the channel confidently and be like, yo, I know I'm about to get some fire shit. Like y'all family now, like it's cool. Like we in, like, like, like that, That's enough it, said, you know? I've, I've been telling people on Facebook, because there's, there's good numbers on Facebook as well. Um, and yeah, I'm like, yo, GS gang has welcomed Zambia to, to its fold. So let's take advantage of this and, and let's see where we can go with it. Facts. One more thing. This is important. Right. Don't be afraid to tell me to shut the fuck up, suck a dick. Like what? Okay. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be right all the time. <laughs> like I don't, I don't like only want people to agree with me. That's not, that's not the environment right. that I foster. Right. If right. I'm, if you don't agree with some shit, like let's butt heads, let's talk about it. Let's tell me, tell me tell why me. I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Right. Like there have been plenty of times where I'm like, oh man, this shit was trash. And it'll be like, it's not trash. You just don't understand the culture where this is playing effect and this is taking effect. And now you're educating me. And now we're having a dialogue. And now my opinion that's is being it. changed through positivity. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what it's it. all about, man. It's, it's not, I don't want yes men. Sometimes, most of the time, if I am right though, like, yeah, like, let's go, let's big up some shit. Mm. But like, if it's not, it's not, you feel me? That's it. I feel you, bro. Cool. Let me ask you some harder questions. Is there, is there anything you want to get to or, or we can move into some harder shit? I think let's get into the harder stuff. All right. I want to, because because there, there's some pressure that I want to put on you about some things, because I, I do want to pick your brain and, and not just give you the light taps. All right. 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 Earlier, who was the artist? Because I have a whole, I just have like a list of artist names that you were mentioning written down. You said that you collabed right. with one of, one of the artists who's really big right now, who's able to make a living off of their craft, who, who like blew up that you did a song with. Who was that? Which one was that? Slap D. Slap D. All right. Shout out to Slap yeah. D. My the least king. favorite name called the, the king. What a what a dope. What a, you know what kind of confidence you gotta have to name yourself Slap D and make a brand out like shout out to him. That's what's up. Big Here's up my to question, him, bro. Yeah. You seem very wholesome. You seem like a good dude. That's the vibe that you give off, right? Uh, I mean, I try. It's the vibe. It's the vibe. Trust me, I know looks yeah. can be deceiving. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. You give off a very positive vibe. Right. When you have these scenarios, are you jealous of him? Is there a jealousy factor when seeing mm. somebody else in that that space succeed? And if not, if you're going to tell me that there's not a jealousy factor, how do you manage that? Because one, an artist, especially the young artists that are going to be listening to your response, one of the biggest downfalls is always trying to measure themselves to other people. And when they see others right. succeed, they let it bring them down, which is never the way that you should do it, but we're all human. You know what I mean? So like, as someone who's been around the block, you said 17 years, you've had success, you've had failures, you've had people that you worked with have massive success. In terms yeah. of your own personal feelings, bro, like let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Right. Man, I'm very honest with you. I do not have a single shred feeling of jealousy for the Zambian rap cats that have been able to be successful and make a big bag of money uh, and, and, you know, have these huge fan bases. Like we, we have Zambian rappers now closing in on a million followers, you know, and are able to click a finger or, you know, flick a finger or whatever. And, and people will do whatever they want to, you know, like they'll listen to their music, they'll download it, they'll stream it. Um, I don't feel that because I think for one, because I had early success as a manager for Zone Fam. At the point when I became the manager for this group Zone Fam, I had already released like three underground albums that not a lot of people had heard up to that point. I decided to take a step back and become a manager because I knew that these young men that I was pushing were very talented, more talented than I was. I could see, I had that vision to see that, look, these boys are gonna do big things and all they need is someone like me to do the pushing and they'll make it and they did. And even though the group is not together today, they have all gone on to do amazing things um, in their own solo rights. Uh, Jay Rocks, one of the members from Zone Fam, is now a TV producer and a successful dancehall artist. Uh, Dope G, Sam Sakala is, is a 
is a is an actor on one of the biggest TV series here in Zambia right now. Tim is became a gospel rapper and is probably having the most anticipated hip hop album ever in Zambia. Like people are just waiting for him to release his album. And by the way, him. what? I want yeah, to you need to you, very, you very definitely badly. need to interview Tim. You and Tim will definitely have a very good conversation. Uh, and then, by the way, I forgot to mention one of our members is actually from South Africa, Young Verbal. He actually runs his own record label now in in SA called Revert Music, and he's about to roll out a whole roster of cats. So, so look, I, I've never had that feeling. Um, I've always had this thing about you know, let's come together, let's support each other. Uh, let's see what we can do to better Zambian music, especially because Zambian hip hop has still not broken out beyond, really beyond our borders. Look, I have got a shout out from Chuck D. He gave me a shout out. He's like, oh, one of these hey. cats from, from Zambia, Holster, he's dope. He plays his stuff on, uh, I get my stuff played on PEPR. You know, um, I've collaborated with all these dudes from, from other countries like Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Argentina. Uh, I, I did a music video with, uh, with a US rapper by the name of Awkward with like eight other African MCs, including Wakazi from Tanzania, Third Eye from Malawi. Like these are all legends. Fuck your uh, shit, King, let's go. <laughs> yeah, but look, because I have had all these little successes, and I'm, I'm slowly breaking the doors for, for the young guys that are coming behind me. Man, I, I don't feel anything. I, I don't feel that, man. Like, that's first it's, of all, it's very hard, I, man. And then, the and then on, on top face, of that, bro. and then look, and then on top of that, let me just one more thing. On top of that, I have a, a beautiful family. I've got a beautiful wife that's actually a better rapper than me. You know, I've got a, I've got a kid. I've got a job. You know, where I get paid, uh, which allows me to record all these EPs and albums. Hey, bro, dude, I'm good. I'm okay. First of all, congratulations I can't on, complain. on 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 life wealth because that sounds beautiful. You painted a very beautiful yeah. picture right there, bro. And I, right, I think right. have, having a happy, healthy family. Congratulations publicly on fatherhood. So. Um, Thank you. Like that's that's amazing. I was gonna say the yeah. look on your face tells me that you genuinely mean what you're saying, right? Like I, I got right. you, you. don't seem this. Like I said at the beginning, you seem like a like a nice dude, right? So like I, I believe you, yeah. bro. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What advice do you have for the youngins that we were talking about, right? Who don't have those accomplishments, who may be dealing with feelings of jealousy, right? Um, I think the advice I would give to the for the for the young guys that might might be feeling jealous about all these other achievements that people are making is look, try and align yourself with people that believe in you. But before that, believe in yourself. You absolutely have to believe in yourself that you can do it, that you have the talent, and that. Even if you are not the best right now, you'll be consistent enough. You will exercise your lyrics enough. You will exercise your, your delivery and your performance enough to get yourself to that higher level. Like you really need to put in the work. And then on top of that, like I said, align yourself with people that are very good at their craft. I was lucky enough. I don't know. I don't like using the word luck, but anyway, I was privileged enough to have an amazing hip hop producer that was a huge critic of my delivery, a huge critic of my lyrics early on. He was like a, a, a brother to me, like he's a year or two older than me, but like a big brother who made my beats. You know, we literally were in the booth for five years creating albums that very few people heard. But while that was happening, I was honing my craft. I was sharpening my skills. And not a lot of people get to have that. Uh, I am I'm so happy to, to have it. This dude's name is Kati. He used to call himself the Pope. Uh, he actually sent me a beat today that we're gonna kill. But yeah, it's 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 something that, that people need to have is people. Surround yourself with people that believe with you, producer, sound engineer. You know, I tell people that 
uh, it might be someone in your family that might have a skill that you need to get you to that next level. Uh, it could be a financial skill, accountant, it could be a legal skill, a lawyer. You know, people need to surround themselves with, with those people early. But more than that, people need to educate themselves on the music industry because the music industry will swallow you. You know, even us guys, uh, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we had a deal that, that didn't work out very well that we thought, you know, would change our lives. But we, we learned a lot from that. You know, we learned a lot that the, the music industry, you have to have your paperwork right. You know, you have to read the fine, the fine print, you know, take get a lawyer paperwork. <laughs> yeah, get a lawyer. Get take a lawyer, step one. Someone. Yes, take the paperwork to someone that understands what it is that is in front of you and you 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 won't have it hard from from then on you know and on top of that i mean look 360 deals you don't need them if you can build a team if you can build a team they'll just be giving you uh, short-term endorsement deals that's all you really need you don't need a deal you've got distribution companies like TuneCore, DistroKid, and One RPM where you can put your own music. This is use that a, to put this, out your music. This is like you a whole different own, interview we could do because this is like a right. deep conversation we got. Exactly, bro. you can get your own publishing. You know, you can register RIAA and you can register to BMI by yourself, and you can leave, you know, that legacy for your children or your children's children, where you know they're just getting your checks. If you're so successful, let me right this you've you've put me on the three other questions that to, to go into this. Yeah. Stuff. So let me let me keep track of this, right? So while we're on that, this is this is yeah. this is pretty all right. I'm I'm gonna play devil's advocate to this too, right? Because you right. and I seem to have a very, very similar philosophy on this, right? I am a huge proprietor on independence. On like if you can right. do it yourself, keep as much capital as you can, keep your percentages, you know what I mean? Like, like build build your wealth. I'm a huge proud of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Stoke just signed with Def Jam. Right. So right. a lot of the, the, the conversations that, that we would have around that um, are about intangibles. Right. You mentioned this in the very beginning. A lot of times right. it, it has to do with checking boxes. Right. It has to do with like, yo, being part of Def Jam is bigger than the number that's written uh, that, that's on a dotted line. Right. Like, like yeah. you have to like understand that when you decide to take a deal, you decide not to take a deal. You start getting into these conversations. Not every person has the same agenda. You know what I'm saying? So right. like, what views one per what one person views as like a terrible positioning or a terrible idea, yada, yada, yada. Their mm. goal might not have been to squeeze every single penny out of the label that they're being associated with. You have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. That might be the move that puts them into uh, you know, a circle that they've thought about being involved in in their entire life. That might put them in right. contact with, with an artist they like. There's so much shit that goes into it outside of like, good deal Absolutely, bad deal. i get that mm. you feel me so like just to mention that all right let's get to these harder questions though so right. this is one this this one is going to come as i have been waiting to be in this scenario to talk about this so i really mm. hope that you're you're open to discussing this because i have not had a sure. chance to break this down yet right i am open i'm open you the gentleman that just sent you the beat who was a mentor to you could you tell me his name one more time i'm sorry uh he, uh kati k-a-t-i kati Kati. All right. So yeah. Kati to you had a pivotal role, right? That Huge. I talk about yeah. all the time, right? You cannot surround yourself with yes, man. I, I run my channel like that, right? Like if, my, if I'm fucking up, tell me I'm fucking up, right? Right. You would say at this point, you have a very, very strong ear for music 17 years in, I would assume. Absolutely. You could pick out, you could listen to your old stuff that he did. And you could pick out that stuff. It was like, hey, the flow here was bad. This bar oh, is overused. Man, this is bad. I, I do that all the time. I'm like, sure, man, this was bad. I could have taken off this word right here. I could re-record this song and make it amazing. Or, or you know what? This song is still hot today. Or, you know what? I, I'm never going to let anyone listen to this song ever. You know? So, so here's the hard question. I've got, I've got that ear now. I've got that ear. Good. This is the question, right? So as the OG at this point, as you've been dubbed against your will, mm. 
I listen to something like the Zam right. Rap Cipher, <laughs> or I'll listen to something like right. you and Philip, you know what I mean, dropped in the Masters of the Universe. Yeah. And I'll hear right. these cats that are on a track with you, and I'll hear them fuck up. Right. And I'll see that eh, this could, True. the flow here wasn't smooth, or this transition that you could hear them breathe. Like we got to work on breath control right. in this scenario. Does that? Exactly. Okay. Why you going mm. under your tutelage? If, if you're on a track mm. with these individuals, why right. do you allow that to happen? Why, like, is it, is it a, is it an artist sanctity? It was like, yo, I don't want to offend this person. Like, that's not my relationship with them. My job right. is not to do that. Like, like I, I'm, this is a serious question. Like I've never been in a position to have this dialogue and I want to, so like, right. wh whatever okay, you're cool. willing to talk about, like, let's, let's get it. No, it's, it's perfect. No, I think, uh, they need that. So, so look, there's only so much that you can do in a studio and there's only so many times you can re-record a verse or you can there's only so much coaching you can do or even point out to a friend to say look you need to get this right because there might be they might not be not be at that stage yet where they're able to I'm trying to put this in into the right words. I can tell you something, but you need to practice right. it. It's just hearing it is not going to turn a switch. You have to practice it over and over that's, and over again. What's that's exactly you. what I'm saying. So why does exactly. the song still come out so, if they're not ready for that? Because they need that. Because sometimes it's not always about uh, perfecting the flow or getting it perfect. It's about being on a song with their mentor or their big brother that's giving them that courage to continue doing, making, you know, continue making music for one. Uh, and also, here you are as someone now that's from the outside looking in saying, look, I think he could have done better there. Now they can take it further and decide to, you know, sharpen up and tighten up the, the flow. Uh, I've been in a position where I was uh, the most amateur rapper in a group of four rappers uh, recording songs um, in forums, you know, like I was in a, in a Zambian forum with these Zambian rappers that were based in the US. And I was easily the worst rapper in, in the group but they allowed me to to jump on these songs with them uh and and one of them would definitely point out the mistakes that i was making um we still put out the songs uh they're on sound click i think <laughs> but but you see i was able to sharpen myself from there um sometimes it takes an artist to look at themselves uh and and be even a little bit embarrassed and be like Yo, I could have done better there. And, and you know, this song is out there, but yo, let me keep on working on my craft and and hopefully get better. I, I think so, that's okay. That's so that so you you are repeating a practice that was pivotal in your development to, yes. to these cats. That that's absolutely. that's my answer. So here's my a question. Absolutely. Now. now that it's been brought to the forefront in a in a mm. direct conversation. And you're right. going to get a chance to reflect on it now because like there's mm. a conversation like it might not be something you ever even thought about prior to that right right true do you think that it's a best practice or do you think that Here, here's 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 my concern right my worry right. is that this the same with the channel if i review somebody on my channel before they're ready mm. to be reviewed that score of a 14 is going to be more mm. damaging to their confidence is going to be more mm. damaging to to their their just just everything their ego you know what i'm saying that you right. could that, that there could be detriment like like someone could be like yo i don't react to kids i don't do scorecards for anyone under 18 and it's not because they're not dope it's because i don't want to influence them to to like first of all i'm old and washed these kids are going to come up with sounds that we've never <laughs> heard of that's going to be way doper True. than what we listen to I don't Absolutely. want my old ass influencing somebody to, to, to their natural development as a child. Right. Right. You don't want to hurt them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm aware yeah. of that, right? So like 18 is like my cutoff. Like if you're under 18, like I fuck with you. Like I support you. Talk to me in two years and I got you. You know what I mean? Like, like the, take the time right. and develop your sound naturally. Do you think it's a best practice at this point where it's like, hey, mm. I'm going to allow Cat MCA to get on here when I know that this right here is going to get him clowned versus mm. versus yo, we're not doing the song today. Or we're not doing the song at all. Like, is there a point where it's like, hey, you're not ready for this. Like, this is this is going to hurt mm, you more than it's going to help. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. You know, I think here's the thing. Um, I think it's OK to allow that for a couple of songs, you know. But if you notice that there is a pattern, you know, three, four, five songs down the line, a whole body of work. I definitely would not allow that in a whole body of work. When you're working on a body of work and, you know, we are at a stage where now technology is amazing. People have studios and audio interfaces in their homes. It gives you enough time, you know, it gives you enough time to take your time, re-record things four or five times if you have to, until you get it right. I used to be in a position where I, I, I didn't have four or five times. I only had one or two chances to record and we're talking like I had to pull it up. Financially, like for like from the position of like, ha like studio time, like we're literally on yes. crunch time because of that. I, exactly. Look, this, this, this is not for me and you, this is for the audience. So I'm, I'm really trying to like right. paint the, like break it down, like paint the picture of what exactly, you're talking about yeah. when we get into this. So, so what you're right. saying is like this, it, it could be a budget issue. It could be a budget issue. You know, is where that, people is don't... that the case with you? Like, are you at a point where you have your own studio now, or are you still paying for oh, studio yeah. time? No, I've, 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 I'm, I'm speaking to you on my focus right audio interface right now, where I record my my vocals, and then I send them out to to a very good sound engineer to do the the final mixes. So, so I'm good. I can take my time. I I now practice and re-record my stuff if I have to. But some younger people might not have, might not be in that position and feel like, you know, they have to put out the work. If they're under my, like you're saying, under my tutelage, right. uh, I mean, there's only so much that, like I'm saying, there's only so much that I can do. And then I'll be like, okay, I think this is okay enough, but you can still be better. You know, that's insulting. Keep on, keep on Do you going. not think okay enough in, insulting. A, in a competitive as, as competitive as hip hop is? If someone <laughs> says, ah, you're okay enough. Well, in a world where everyone thinks they're fucking MC God, you're gonna tell right. someone, ah, that's okay enough. Like I mean you don't think that's insulting? No, I might look. <sighs> How, how how can I put it? I could be wrong. I could be, I said I want to have the conversation. I've never had it before. Right, I right. Be I know. I understand. I understand. Look, not everyone is on their A game all the time. Like people have these. Sometimes you will have a no. A I'm with you. Or a, a bar I'm with or a you. line somewhere. Yeah, a bar or a line somewhere. You're like, hey man, I think we dropped the ball there. You know. So uh, why put it out? Why put it out? What what's the I, what's the reasoning behind? It? Like, uh, let me rephrase the question. Right. How how important is it for a track to be as close to perfect as possible mm. for for a country that is competing against South Africa, mm. the United States, Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania, Sierra Leone? There are killers very in strong. every one of these countries, right? Very so, strong. You know what it. It is very important. It is very, very important to have a top notch, top quality, near perfect song. So it why is would you important. put that pressure on the kids? Like instill that into them while they're young and impressionable before they think it's cool to just put out fucking a cipher where you have three people that are lighting it up and one person that's like still trying to find a pocket. Like that's not that's right. not conducive to we want to grow the culture that's conducive to i want to stunt on these motherfuckers all i care about is my verse oh, let me come out here no. like da, 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 da. <laughs> like you know what nah, i'm saying man it's not it's not it's not like that at all it's not like that at all believe me some of the best mcs have come from a place where uh 
they were under pressure because okay so here's another thing uh steve we have lost that thing that we used to have where we used to refine each other in ciphers and we used to refine each other in the studios because oh. now everyone has their own setup at home and mm -hmm. then everyone i mean in in zambia we used to at, at some point we had ciphers every weekend we, d we don't have that anymore you know everyone wants to now go straight to the big time and i think because they've seen it in the us where you have you have these viral stars that seemingly become famous overnight everyone believes they can do that and they don't need to go through the foundation they don't need to go through the fundamentals that's what we have lost but now coming back to to having a seemingly uh, a weaker delivery or a weaker MC on a song with all these strong MCs, believe me, pressure makes diamonds. And what, what we're doing by, by having, having that, that competitive, we're trying to bring that, that competitiveness where an MC can get to a point where he might even be better than everyone else that was on on these songs with him in in the beginning. I, am I making sense? Not yet. I'm waiting for you to finish. Go ahead. I'm, I'm following. I like, much, like, like, okay. I think that's pretty much it. I think, but I but think you I know, fundamentally I, I, disagree. I, like, I also look. I I stand to be corrected. I stand to be corrected. I am not personally. I am not perfect. I. I have no, you no, know, <laughs> done also exactly. So I mean, let me ask you. Let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. So right. now let let's put it in a very realistic scenario, right? And okay. then tell me how you you would hypothetically react. All right. Let's right. take take the Zamrock cipher. All right. I gave right. a breakdown for every cat that was on there. Right. Right. Before we do that, do you agree to at least a degree with my assessment of the individual takes of what I liked or disliked from each one? No, not all of them. <laughs> okay, so you not all of them, but yeah, take, but but a lot, but a lot of them were spot on. Yeah. So so let's let's take one that you did think was accurate. Okay. So now you have it. Uh, so we Philip, need... look. So look with Philip. Okay. Philip can definitely tighten up his flow. He's he's this, got this he's got. Cool. It's it's not about attacking individual artists. Here, here, this, yeah, let me, exactly. Let me let me get, let me get to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? So now yeah. you have this scenario where you agree with the assessment, right? So now I me agree with as the assessment. me as Philip. Right. I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, who the fuck is this cat from America telling me X, Y, and Z? Let me go to, let me call my big homie up. I called a big homie and I'm like, yo, Holston, do you agree with what this fucking white dude on the internet is saying? And you're like, Yeah. And now I'm like, well, what the fuck did you tell me that when it was recorded? Like, you got I gotta wait for this fucking dude overseas to tell me this shit when you could have been like, yo, tighten this up while we was in the booth. Like, you don't think that's a real scenario? Like, I feel like right. If that was me, I like still gotta have to fight me. If still let me put out some trash, like you, you gotta give right. me a fair one. Like, bro, I, I'll I'll never forget. I hit up. You know who uh, Captain FS is? You know who Cap is from um, South Africa. What's the name? Captain Cap Captain FS. Free State. Oh yeah. Ooh, ooh, that dude. That dude, nice, bro. I was listening to his ape tape. Bro, come ape. on, the ape tape is fire. Ape bro. tape is fire, bro. So like. Cap, I, I, I love him. Cap like a brother. Like that is that is my dude. He's just a solid human being, right? So He's like, nice. I'll come up with verses and shit like that. And I remember I was doing a cipher and I sent him a verse and he responded back and he killed me in the most polite way I've ever heard. So I sent him a jump. Wow. He's like, he's like, oh, that's cool. You're just gonna let them live. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> hey, what? That verse never seen the light of fucking day. <laughs> wow. Oh, this shit, I'm so fast. <laughs> like, I feel like I would much rap me as an me as an artist, right? Take take me as an mm. MC, not not me as media, right? As an mm. artist, that's invaluable, bro. Like, you know what I knew right. at that moment? I knew at that mm. moment that there was some degree of respect that that man had for me. That he mm. knows that I can I can hear that and I can take it, and that I won't be in my fucking feelings. And he cares enough about me to like. Push me now. Did he say he didn't say, yo, you're fucking trash? Like, why the fuck would you do that? That shit's ass. Exactly. Get that out of it. 
You know what he said to me? He let me draw my own conclusion. He said, that's really cool of you to let them live like that. And I was like, oh, oh my God. And then wow. I had to go back and look at it and like, man, I thought this shit was hot. Maybe fucking not. You know what I mean? And then a different right. person. Now, is that always the best case? I don't know. I'm just having the conversation. Right. I don't know. And 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 also, I think what I, what I can say is, look, so we approach uh, different uh, bodies of work differently. With ciphers, I send out a beat to the individual MCs mm -hmm. and I ask them to send in their verses. Mm -hmm. At that point, when they send in their verses, there's no going back most of what? the time. Send it the fuck back. I mean, this this is the conversation. See, you're too, you're too nice of a guy. This this is <laughs> this is maybe that might be it. Like I, I just feel like. And again, I could be wrong too. I, I like that we're we're open right. to the dialogue. We both know that, like, yo, we're just we're just talking from but, our own okay, individual so, perspective. So let me just finish up. Now, when it comes to albums, right? If you're gonna put out an album or an EP or a body of work, we are refining that project. We are going over and over and over, you know, re-recording because this is something that's you know. Why do you value one piece of art more than another? So I'm not valuing one piece of art over another. For me, with, with ciphers, it's like, and, and also because we are not recording the cipher in the same space, it's very hard for, for an MC, we're not refining each other that way. Most of the time we're recording it in our own spaces and sending in a verse. So it's a situation where um isn't that easier um it's, it's kind of easier it's kind it's kind of easier but we don't get a harp yeah, on this we don't get a harp on this i just you know what i mean i just wanted to have the dialogue and put it out there exactly and, no, and, i, I understand yeah it's, it's a situation where i think look a cipher is a cipher people send in their verses uh we don't want we don't want the other MCs, sometimes MCs will come back like, look, look, you do, you gave that dude a chance to, you know, listen to my verse or we're well, trying to keep it that competitive, you know, you're not listening to the verse or you gave that dude a chance to record his verse three or four times. I don't want none of that talk. So you send in what you send in and we put it out. Um, so we said, could I do better? Could I do better? Yes, I can probably do better in terms of advising MCs and saying, look, I think you dropped the ball on this bar. The delivery here was, can we, you know, can we refine it? I, I'm open to that. I think I can do better on that. But Here's my last, my, my, last, my closing statement. I think, and, I, yeah. and I'll let you, I'll let you go. This is the last, the I last cool. piece. I cool, cool, cool. I want to word this correctly. Words are important, right? Yes. We said earlier the difference between a oh, when we're talking about the deals, right? That when someone yes. goes and takes a deal, that not everybody does it for the same reasons. That there are different goals, and if someone's goal is to make as much money as possible, then their actions mm. are going to be reflective of that. If your goal is to to to, to just be famous and get clout, then you're not going to care mm. about the money portion. You know what I mean? Like your actions are going to be based on that. Mm. My point, I guess, that I'm saying is, is if you are saying that me as you right if i'm saying yeah. that i am a, i am a man of culture and i care yeah. about growing the zambian hip-hop scene then right. my prior my priority should be to make everything that comes from 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 anything that i touch to be just as good if not better if a cat from sa or nigeria or america or canada mm. listens to it mm. right mm. because listen because mm. you did end up pushing the zamrock cypher to me right now imagine I did. Imagine if all six of those cats, imagine if everybody on that had a hundred out of a hundred verse and you you, right. you you thought that it was flawless from front to end. We might have had a Zambian right. month instead of a Zambian week. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I this, hear this you. is I hear this you. is this is my thought process. That's the me. mentality, yeah. That's the mentality we need to uh go towards. And I agree with you, yeah, definitely. Um I told you these were gonna be hard questions, baby. <laughs> Yeah, this is tough, man. This is tough. This is tough. But but look, um, hmm, cipher ciphers are they're very touchy subjects here, you know. But but I I feel like uh, it, it it's also a matter of preference for some people, you know. 
This one is why person look I, 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 not, you're not doing that today because I, <laughs> I asked you, I, I set up for this, right? That's why I asked yeah. you if you had the ear for music. And then I asked you if you agreed beforehand. So it's right. not, here's the thing. Music is not subjective. And I've seen you, I've seen you put this out there, right? So the, oh, here, here's, yeah. hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's, let, I, I'm, I'm going to give you bail. We're going to go back and forth, right? Right. Music is only subjective after a certain point. There mm. is such a thing as a good flow and a bad flow. There is such a thing mm. as, a, as syllables not matching up versus syllables right. matching up. These are not subjective. These are objective literary devices, right? They're, like right. What, what might be subjective, subjective is if this flow is done properly and I don't mm. like it, that's subjective. But whether right. or not the flow was done properly is not subjective. It is not subjective, yes. So, so it's not a matter of taste, right? Unless your taste is, I love people to rap off beat, then we don't need to be having a conversation because that's not what this, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're not, we're not talking about the same shit at that point. You feel me? True, so, like, true. Music, music is not subjective until you get to a certain mastery of it. And then once that mm. mastery is there, it's all taste. Everything is subjective. It, it, nothing is at subjective point, until everything is subjective. You feel me? Like, that's my mm. that's my view. Yeah. It's it's interesting because you you the reason why I said that I mean I understand what you said but what, the reason why I've said that is look the the beauty about the Zamrock cipher is that we had all these cats with totally different flavors right if you will to, totally Facts. different styles on it. So you will find that one person heard the cipher in a certain way and be like this dude killed it and then you have a situation be like uh no did you listen to this other dude he killed it so in in that sense yes but when it comes to the flows and when it comes to the syllables and the way people be lining up their metaphors and similes and stuff like that i agree with you that the, the, that needs to be done in a certain way and look it's still people are some people are still young some people have only been rapping for two or three years. You know, some people have been only been rapping for five. And uh, don't they say that people need 10 years to master the, a certain skill or they need 10,000 hours? Some 10, people still hours. need to get the, some people need to get their 10,000 hours in. Some people are still getting there. They're not there yet. Don't you think that that 10,000 hours gets alleviated a lot with proper guidance, though? It does. Like the 10,000 hours yes. doesn't have to suck. The 10,000 hours can, can be pleasurable. You know and and it, it can actually less, it can be less than 10,000 hours. If you have that. If you have someone who's already put yeah. their 10,000, 10,000 hours in, that's now guiding yes. you. You feel me? And again, this is Absolutely. all out of love. Like, I think everybody that was on that cypher has a future in hip hop. Like there's not one cat that was on that Zamrock cipher that I think is trash. I want to make that Absolutely. perfectly clear, right? We're talking Absolutely. about going from good to better or from better to great. Mm. We're not talking about going from trash to being able to rap. I want to make that perfectly clear. Mm. This is not an attack on anyone. I wanted to have a conversation with somebody who was in the mentor positioning right that you know what i mean like i've never had this opportunity so first of all thank you i appreciate you being willing to dive I, into i appreciate a, you man i appreciate the combo. questions man i appreciate this yeah yeah i don't know what you thought this was going to be this ain't your normal pr run baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah this no this fun, this bro. one this is definitely going down in history as the best interview i've ever had let's uh, go baby on this subject bro it's going down you have to look at if, if you want to watch hip hop interviews, uh, Pristine Queen, PQ, right? She's she is bar none the greatest interviewer I've ever seen. I, I try to model myself. Oh, yeah. Time. Where is she from? South Africa. Me, her, and Stogie, too. You're the ones who had the podcast oh, together. PQ, yeah. I think I followed that account on, on Twitter. She's got like a radio show. Yep. Massive Metro. She does the element. Was, was she an MC, by the way? Nah, no. Nah, we try to get her to rap all the time. She won't do it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. No, okay, cool. No, I'm gonna follow our account and, and and check her out for sure. Now, when you were talking about this, this what does one last statement for the people who are listening, right? Because you said something that was very important, and you said that when people mm. listen to the Zamrock cipher, any cipher, right, and you will have a person tell yeah. you, "Hey, I like this person." You'll have a person that likes this say, "I like this person." I like this person, right? Right. I I mean this from the bottom of my heart, right? Right from mm. the de depths of my soul. <laughs> most most That's people really deep. are fucking idiots and i i mean that like i really do right 
you getting someone to like something isn't an accomplishment, right? What mm. I would, the way I would look at it is if Stoke look at this, right? You said you look up to me. You said Stoke someone that like, oh, man. Would, like put on I'm a pedestal, on. right? He's, he's what up would, there. He, would he like it? Whoa. There's a di- there's a difference between Tom Dick walking down the fucking street saying, oh, that sounds good. And the opinion of someone who's done the craft, who's mastered the craft, listening to it and saying that it's ill. Right. I, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because someone says they like it, that doesn't mean anything. Who is that person? That is what is their, the best, what is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, what is their opinion based off? Does it matter to you? Right? Because like, I, I always look, I get more negativity than anything, right? Trust me. I am a very opinionated person. It is very mm. easy to hate me. I love it. Right. Because right? someone will come to me and they'll be like, man, I don't give a fuck about your opinion. And I'll be like, cool. Then why hey. are you listening? Then why are you listening? To wow. Me? I respect <laughs> that. Right. And I look at yeah. it like that too. If you're going to say something negative about me, I have to first ask myself, would I care if you said something positive about me? Is your opinion one that I am chasing after? Is your approval right. one that matters to me? No, not at you all. You feel me? So like, yeah. yeah, if you have a thousand people that are saying you got washed on that, but you have two of me telling you that that shit was fire, how do you feel? Oh, I mean, to me said it's fire. Yeah. If to me says it's fire, it is fire. I'm walking on water for the rest of the week. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, oh for sure. And if this, Tumi this, says this it's is, fire, come on. And this is why I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't apply to that mentality of, um, yeah, well, you know, everybody likes a different thing, blah, 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 blah. Because when they, the, the right ear gets in front of it, some people will get a nod and some people mm. won't. And that's, that's just the reality. People like, like all MCs are not created equal. That's just not, it's, it's not a fun, it's not a fun family friendly environment where it's like, let's all hold hands. Everyone's the best. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like let's, let's get this Pumba. shit. Oh, yeah. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Um, cool. Yeah. I'm done with the top. I, I, that, that's my two cents on the top. Anything else? I, obviously closing words is on you. Is there anything else that you want to say on that before we move on from it? Uh, Let's move on from that. (laughs) All right, cool. Here's a big question for you. Mm. What can I do to help? Okay. Uh, React to more Zambian hip hop. (laughs) Done. So so look, we, we, yeah. So look, we, we have a lot of cats, a lot, a lot of cats. And the great thing about uh, a lot of the Zambian fans is they're pretty uh, well informed and you know they'll guide you through through the industry people have their favorites of course but you know you you probably get a lot of suggestions of songs that you will not understand what is being said or what is going on but they'll guide you they'll translate the songs and and you take it from there um so for one we we've, we've got you know the reactions that would be a great that would be a great touch interviews like you've done with me with more cats so you can get a different perspective a uh, different idea of what's going on that would be great um like you said you're doing that uh the charity event uh charity charity event with with the dudes in nigeria i'm ready to jump on something like that i can organize something with people over here and we could do something for some school kids over here of you know reactions i know there are people here in in the zambia music industry who you would react to and you'd probably get 10,000 views and if that helps get some school kids uh more money or you know something to help them pay their school fees or to buy sanitary pads or to buy books and pens or anything like that. I am down for that. I will organize that. I will rally the soldiers. I will bring them together. You know, that's, that's, that's my strength. My strength is in bringing people together in networking. I consider myself a, a, a great networking person, uh, you know, that can connect with different people. So, so yeah, I'm down for, for something like that. Let's, uh, um, before, let's let's not move on from that right away. Um, I like that idea. And if, if there's something that my channel can do where we can actually make a difference, like I'm, I'm very, very big on that, right? Let's 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 table that right. until, a, until after May 1st. 
so that we have proof of concept. Let's see how right. the one that we have affects everybody. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's see if it's a success or not. And then we'll know right. what, where the adjustments need to be made. Does that make sense? Like first let's, this, we exactly. already have a trial run that's already like happening no matter what. So after May 1st exactly. happens, um, let's give it a week. Let's see, you know, what the final numbers are, you know, effort versus blah, blah, blah. Sure. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, if, if you're talking about being able to set up something like that to help people, it's say less. I'm 100% in. Definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely be down for that. And then what else, man? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to actually do a documentary on Zambian hip hop. Um, so the main challenge right now is is obviously funding, but I do have uh, an editor, a video editor. I do have a script. I know that is being put together. Uh, but if that documentary is done and it can help give people a better understanding of the history of Zambian hip hop, when hip hop first hit Zambia on through videotapes and cassette tapes and CDs back in the early 90s, uh, and people were break dancing and all that, and up to now, if I can give people a good picture of, of Zambian hip hop through that documentary, I think that's going to be big. So that's that's my uh, contribution to the industry uh, going forward. So that's if dope. anyone would like to get involved in that in some some point that's in any fine. way, I mean, that would be that would be dope. I know that there's a few other people that are trying to do the same thing. Uh, I know my brother Critic is doing the same. I mean, it helps. It, it grows the culture. I think that's one thing we haven't done is tell tell our stories. Here's and something very that would be dope for you to, too. I, uh, yeah. I, I did a video after, after about a year of reacting to South African music. Um, mm. And it was called an introduction to South African hip hop. And it was targeted oh, yes. towards my American audience, right? That, that was unfamiliar. Yeah. And what it was, ah. it was an introduction of what the terms are, what certain slangs, you know what I mean? That you're going to hear a lot yes. are, what, so, what certain world events were that you're going to hear. Like, like, like most Believe people in Philly, Philly has no idea what apartheid is. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they're right. not going to understand any of that. So I did that. Right. And then I, and then after that, I break down all the types of music and I gave them a number of suggestions for each one. So it's like, cool. If you want to check out something that's vibey, here are three selections from three different artists. If you Come want something on. that's bar heavy, here's three selections. Come from on. Artists. And these Come are the, on. The, the selections, bro, are ones that are easy on American ears. So it's the ones that are the, mm. the, the baby steps into the hip hop scene, you know what I mean? Right, to make it right. make it easier to, to adjust. So doing something so like that, I, I see think where would, you're going with definitely this. be dope. So something like that, yeah. On your channel, coming from you to the outside world, right. that would be helpful. Because I tell people, look, we don't need even like an hour long documentary, even short 15 minute, 10 minute documentaries, just teaching people about the basics goes far. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. hundred percent. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so and when you, when you put that out, I'll react to the whole documentary too on the channel. We'll, we'll sit awesome. down and make a movie, yeah. make a movie time. Definitely. Out of it. Uh, yeah. Not, so, so not just for like them either. That I want to know. <laughs> I, I right. want to know. <laughs> exactly. Cool, bro. Yeah. Did you have so any questions it. for me? Anything that you wanted to, uh, to ask me or the GS gang, anything on this side that I could answer for you? Uh, well, I think we already talked about, you know, how artists can help increase their presence and uh social media and all of that uh there's another question i think i'll just get one from from one of uh the people that's following me what are your thoughts on a, a rapper like for example let's put let me put myself in those shoes i started off as a boom bap you know listening recording artists you know just putting out that underground stuff that you know a lot of the boom bap guys feel right. and then you know i get to a point where i'm like frustrated i'm like look my audience is not increasing or, or anything like that hey let me do some commercial stuff what are your thoughts on on mc switching up and being like yo i'm just gonna do this commercial stuff and maybe so here's yeah. uh, this is a great this is a fantastic question and I have a very yeah. strong opinion on it. It's not one. It's not yeah. one that I haven't thought about. So I'm, in the, I'm, gonna, in, I'm gonna do my Afro beats. In, in our circles, right? 
people refer to that as selling out, right? Yeah. And in my heart of hearts, I think it's only the literal most uneducated human beings in the world who would consider that selling out. Here's the fact right. of the matter. If you as an artist have 10,000 listeners doing boom bap, mm. right? Right. Well, just doing rap in general, right? Right. And if you do an on piano track, you then have a hundred thousand listeners. You right. now have the attention span of a hundred thousand people that you can just then go and put out another fucking boom bap record and go back to hip hop. And you now have an audience that is 10 times larger to listen to that. And now transit, like, like it's kind of like we talk about like collabs and shit like that. Right. Like it's a no brainer. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's like, who is upset about this? We, you, you mentioned reason. If you go and look up my, my comments on reason, I think I was talking uh, ironically, I think it, it came up during an interview with Mr. Tubby because she did a collab with reason on the project. Exactly. Right? They are very good friends that much. I know. Yeah. And reason was getting shit on from the, the essay hip hop community for doing a piano. But he also made some inflammatory statements like y'all never loved me. I, I gave, but like, whatever, take, take that out of there. Right. <laughs> my point okay, is yeah. like, how do you not look at that and go, man, he's got a million fucking followers now. I hope he does a hip hop record next. Instead of chasing him out of the industry, instead of being like, ah, we don't fuck with you no more. Why not? Like, man, you're influential. Everything like, you're, first of all, you're bringing lyricism, uh, lyricism to a genre that needs it. To which a genre, is like, yes. And that's fucking amazing. You're going to make that music sound better, which is better for the South African just music industry and entertainment industry. In As a whole, Bro, yes. I have nothing but respect for him. Now, there's also something that you could just sell out and never do hip hop again and blah, 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 blah. But that goes back to my original statement. Why did you get into this? What are you doing this for? Are you doing it what for money? What are you in this for? Then, then do go where the money is. If you're talking about I'm in this for the money and you want to do underground hip hop, you're a fucking idiot. That's not where the money is. Like, <laughs> why are you doing it? And wow. then, like, the, the people who, who criticize this haven't put an ounce of thought outside of, he says he's a rapper. Rappers are supposed to rap. Like, who the fuck are you? You've never created anything in your life. You're going to tell right. me how to fucking be an artist? Like, bro, this is why I'm talking about, like, the opinions that you're listening to, do they matter to you? Because you'll have a million people tell you that what you're doing is wrong that have never done a fucking thing in their life. Like, it's... Wow. Bro, if you ever tell someone that they're fucking... Like, listen, I'm telling you right now, if you have ever told yeah. someone out there and you're watching this and you're like, now, nah, I think so... Like, you suck a dick. You're an idiot. Like, let these artists eat. The bigger their audience is, the more they can do for your country, for your scene, for local rappers, for other artists. You don't think that now that Reason gets much bigger, he can go and collab with somebody who's a no-name and put them on? Right. Like, get the, there's so much into it, bro. I'm very passionate about this topic. Like, yeah. This so, so basically, you're saying people should do themselves. Do you, bro. If you want to do what you want to do, do it. No, I'm saying that there is strategy. I mean, yes, obviously. But like... Yes understand that there is strategy that's involved like marketing mm. does not happen by accident people do things for strategic purposes right mm. whether it's mm. positive or negative very rarely does somebody big name in the industry just be like ah i'm on the fucking win today maybe i'll just switch that on piano you don't think that there was a million and one decisions that went into that like how can you be yeah. so fucking small-minded it's ridiculous and then like people love counting other people's pockets in general too so like that shit is just corny like i don't know man yeah, right. I would say if you're wow. an artist, come up with a strategy. Figure out what you're doing it for. Who who do you want to impress? Mm. You want to imp impress the hip hop purists? You want to be considered an elite MC? Then chase mm. that. Do you want to pop and just like get money, bitches, and cars, and that's all you care about? Chase that. Chase right? that. Because you're invincible at that point. Once you say this is who, look at Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly just named his album Mainstream Sellout. Right. Because he knew hey. everyone was going to be talking shit. So what he say in the interview, he said, I want to take the power away from them. You can't call me something I don't already claim on my own. I'm doing this right. because I want to fucking do it. And I respect them for it, bro. I don't listen to pop punk like that in my personal life. But that whole like right. I support everything that he's fucking doing because he's doing what he wants to do. And he's not letting that millions of voices like like direct him one way or the other and i think every artist should like fucking look like that bro if you want to chase your right. pockets chase your pockets chase respect chase respect you want to figure out how to do both figure out how to do both like i'm with it bro and then you have people like right. emi abaga where emi abaga is trying to do both simultaneously so he puts the illegal music series out for the underground cats and then you got the albums that come out for the people who want, like like dude there's so many fucking options like right nah, 
call someone a sellout. That, that was actually that was actually gonna be my next question. What do you feel about a fusion album? So you know you, you could have a okay, let's say it's an EP with a with a boom bap joint in the in the beginning, then it switches into like a pop punk joint, and then it's kind of like tra like so fusion. It's like different sounds on one album. How do you feel about an, a project like that? There are two there are two distinctions that I make, right? You have an album, which is a cohesive project. And then you have yes. a playlist, a playlist, which is a collection of songs. All right? right. A fusion album would be dope because if it's an album, there should still be a cohesive theme from start to end. That's All right. It. If it doesn't sound the same on every track, it's because you have a diverse artist, not because they've missed the mark. All right. Mm. Are there motifs that are happening throughout the album? Is there a story mm. that's being told? Is there a progression mm. through the album? Is there oh, a noticeable man. difference between first track and last track? Are the skits these are the conversations, the, bro? There's so much that goes into it, yeah. right? And there's nothing wrong with putting out a playlist either. That's like, yo, here's a bunch of music I put together that doesn't fit in on an album, but I think some of y'all might fuck with this. So here's 10 random tracks together on my fucking random playlist volume one. Go and enjoy that. Don't expect cohesion. I'm, not, I'm telling you that it's not there. I'm telling you this is just a collection of dope tracks. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Wow. Like, but But again, you're talking about things that are done purposefully. Right. You were talking about right. having a strategy and executing it. There is such thing as a bad album that's just not cohesive. There is such thing right. as a playlist that's just trash. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like just because you say it's one or the other doesn't make it good. You still have right. to be good. But like, yeah, like to, to answer your question, like that's that's a very elaborate way of, of that. I look at that. You know what I'm saying? Would a right, fusion cool. album do it if all the elements are there? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, no, that's dope. I think a, a lot of people would be very happy to hear that because what what ends up happening is a lot of people are afraid to experiment they're afraid to do certain sounds because they think people are going to look down on them you know right now well, one of the should, biggest they should quit yeah right Fucking now one quit. of the biggest <laughs> what? what one of the biggest arguments one of the biggest arguments we have in zambia right now is there's this whole dj's versus the artist thing where a lot of the DJs in the commercial nightclubs, so you know, like the big nightclubs where most of the young people go in the shopping malls, like in the expensive areas, play only I'm a piano from South Africa. And then one of the Zambian artists is like, dude, I was in your nightclub the other day and you guys are just playing I'm a piano the whole night. Why don't you throw in one or two Zambian songs? We've got some hot Zambian songs. What's going on? And then it turned into like a whole month of back and forth from the DJs and the artists. They're like, yo, you don't support us. Why should we play your stuff? And besides the owners of the establishments, you know, say we should just play Ama Piano because that's what the young people are dancing to. So, you know, what, what are we gonna do? Because we'll play one or two Zambian songs and people will, will, will run away from the dance floor or something. So it's like these different arguments that are going on and, I think people I don't are trying to think, figure out, you know, what do we do? I'm American, right? So I'm a very yeah. cap, I'm a capitalistic person. I believe right. in, in the free market. I believe that the audience dictates the product, the direction, all of that shit, right? Right. So in this scenario, you are not talking about taste. You are talking about business transactions. If I am mm. a DJ, this is my job. This is what I do. Now, granted, you got Correct. But, but instead in the beginning, but but instead a long time ago that once you had to start paying DJs to do their job to, to put break records and shit like that, it was that's over. Kind of, shit started getting real bad at that point. And like that's a whole different perspective. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about you as a like hoster decides I want to be a DJ, right? I'm going to go to this mm. establishment. Hey, establishment number one, can I DJ here? Cool. This is what I want you to play. This is this is a job at this point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? I don't care if your opinion is like, yo, I want you to play this Zambian music. Well, the Zambian music makes people in the establishment unhappy. So I can either make mm. this random Twitter egg happy to do what this Twitter egg wants to do, or I can like a good DJ is going to play to the audience. If I am playing this music and people are dancing, then the problem is that the music you make isn't as good. 
And if mm. your problem is, oh, you need to have a sense of nationalism, that's the dumbest thing Come I on. ever fucking heard, bro. <laughs> like, what? You want me to the perp? Like, get better. What? Get better. Right. There is a, now, granted, there should be DJs who, like, like again, we like make a strategy, right? There's going to be a DJ out there who's like, I want to to be to appeal to the hip hop purist. I'm gonna break records. I'm gonna be the guy that that takes it back to grassroots hip hop and do that. I'm not here to just make a buck and play on piano. And that guy right. is your go to guy for the MCs. You know what I'm saying? There you don't, we go. Don't get mad at the guy making a fucking living because he's playing music that people want to hear. Get mad at the DJ who's playing shit that no one's dancing at. Like that, like, exactly. What? The like, options I, are always there. You, you have a DJ that will support the local stuff. Focus on them. Exactly, right? And right. then this, this is where the free market shit is. When, when that DJ becomes more popular because they're pushing better music because the hip hop music is better, then those establishments are going to start telling those DJs, hey, this is what's hot right now. Play this. I'm here. Right. And now all of a sudden it's in there and you don't have to do the bickering and shit like that. What do you got to do? Mm. Make better music. Get it in front of people. Get a follow. That's it. Like it's, it's all... Work harder. Work harder is always the answer to, to everything. Mm. Is is there is there blackballing in the industry? Absolutely. Is there shady people that just pay off to get on playlists? Absolutely. Payola. Payola bro, exists. Bro. Here's the thing, dog. That's not going anywhere. So we either learn how yeah. to navigate around it or shut the fuck up. Like yeah. all you're gonna do is complain and make no progress. If, if like if you choose to complain, that's your whole strategy. All you're gonna do is bitch and you're just gonna be a bitch for the rest of your life. If you are smart and you're like, hey, I recognize that the only reason this DJ is playing it is because X, Y, and Z is paying them. Well, now you got to do two things. Either you pay them as well and play the game or find somebody else who doesn't do that. It's as simple as that. Strategy. And there's positives and Strategy. negatives to each. You, you talked about reaction channels earlier, right? Some people that be charging yeah. you. There's positives oh, yeah. and negatives. If you go to a very large channel that has 3 million viewers, right? And every one of their, their videos gets 100,000 views and you pay mm. $1,000 for that video, right? Mm. There's 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 a give, there's a reason you're paying $1,000 for that reaction and not $1,000 for mine. I don't have right. 3 million. I, I, I'm, I'm the grassroots guy. I'm the guy that's doing it for integrity. I'm not the guy who's living off that. I work a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like. It, where you're going to is what matters. You know what I'm saying? And the results that you get back, as much as I love my channel, are you going to get more viewers if a channel with 3 million viewers reacts to you versus me? Yeah, mm. you're going to get a lot more viewers off them. The reaction might be shit and fake and phony, but if that's not what you're going for, if you're going for numbers, then play the game. Don't like you getting on Twitter and being like, man, this reaction channel wants to charge me a thousand dollars. And now I can't get a reaction. You have, you have grown zero. You look like a whiny little bitch to everybody. The reaction channel is not going to ever play you now, ever, because now you're talking shit on their brand. Why would they ever give right. you a chance, even if you got bigger, right? D nothing good comes from it. The other option is like, hey, I paid a thousand dollars. I got all these views. Let me just like, ah, like what's going on right now. And then your third option right. is go to some, go someplace else or do what I did, bro. I started a reaction channel because I thought the other reaction channels sucked because I thought that they were fake and phony. I had, I came into this industry with a chip on my shoulder. I was like, yo, fuck everybody. I've calmed down a lot since then. <laughs> but my point was I didn't like their reactions. So I fucking made my own. <laughs> that's, right. that's the only reason I do, do this. Your own thing. Exactly. So create your reason. own if, if look, like that's a very important point right there. If people are not giving you the audience that you want, if people are not giving you the space, create your own, create your own podcast, create your own Let's channel go. and oh. get there, work hard and then you get there. So that's a very, very good point. But yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. Cool. I think, I think that that's it for now. Those are, those are my questions. Cool, man. Yo, I oh, want to that, thank you yeah. very, very much for coming to chop it up with me today, bro. This has been super thank dope you, interview. Bro. We've covered a lot. Thank you, bro. We covered a lot. Oh man. yeah, <laughs> but there's still more to cover, so we can do we can do this another time again. Nah, I do. This is not a relationship that's going anywhere anytime soon. I really hope that oh, we can sure. uh, get together and, and really like push some numbers for some cats and, and do something special with this. I appreciate you right. being being interested yeah. in that. Like that's dope, man. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely gonna encourage a lot of people to watch this interview because there are some things we talked about there that is gonna change people's uh, mindsets for the better. Good. I hope it opens and, up good and, dialogue. And, yeah, it's gonna bring up some very good debates, some very good talks, 
uh and and yeah i think i'm gonna watch I, i'm i'm hoping i i really i really do believe steve I, and you might not believe this that this will open a lot of doors for for hip-hop here in zambia i mean it, if it that's true will. bro if that's true then it's honestly more than i could ever ask for like that's all i want bro like that no like, like i'm 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 i've really really tried to keep my ego in check during all of this i've tried to just be humble all the time like i try to downplay myself but like if we have the opportunity to make a positive influence like i'm attacking it at all from all angles man like that's what it's all about it's a beautiful thing bro. all right cool no doubt bro cool yo this has been super super dope gs gang i hope you guys enjoyed watching it please go and follow holster on all of his Peace. social medias you will not be disappointed. This man pushes dope hip hop from all over the world. So feel free to go and do it. You guys will see me and him interact on Twitter and shit like that all the time. Uh, anything you want to say before you get out of here, my guy? Uh, I just want to say thank you, man. Thank you for having me. GS Gang, shout out. Thank you for bigging up Zambian hip hop for a whole week. And we're looking forward to more reactions. We're looking forward to more collaborations. We're looking forward to even doing like a lot of the charitable stuff that we we're talking about. Uh, we're just looking at changing people's lives. That's that's, that's the main thing that I want to help do. Uh, because man, I'm good. I'm okay. I've got a family. Uh, I've got friends. Uh, yeah, and and I make music because it's like a therapy for me. So man thank you That's thank you good, everyone out there yeah so as always i love y'all i appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all on the next one man peace bro what a dope interview